welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so very excited because this is the first podcast that is <laughs> being hosted from New Hope West, a new uh, Jordan Public School renovation site. And so many awesome things happening right now. The fact that it's this quiet in here is actually quite impressive. It is. Yes, if you hear people running around, <laughs> that's, right. that's yes. normal. Or that's random large bang. Right that's right. Yeah, that's very adorable. But we're so excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, I want to go around the room and see how everybody's doing. So, Nate, how are you doing, buddy? Um, I am physically getting better. Awesome. Yes, Glad the stitches were removed on on Monday, and so I'm walking a little bit better and sleeping better. So that's all good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, tired overall, yeah. mental, physical, spiritual. It's been uh, yeah, been heavy on every one of those areas mm-hmm. lately. Mm-hmm. So uh, tired and looking forward for uh, to a week off next week. So that'll be good. I'll try to rest. Yes. As PT pushed us in staff meeting, I will, <laughs> I will try very hard <laughs> as I continue good. to learn what that's like. So yeah, but doing great. Like the progress here at, in the volunteers yeah, showing tell up. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, it's been an unbelievable kind of like, uh, what is it now? It's been 17 days since we signed the lease and had possession of this property. And it, what, the amount of work that's been done here mm-hmm. would take usually like four months for yeah. people to try to restore a building that's been vacant, ba- abandoned, abused by vandals mm-hmm. for ten, over 10 years. And yeah. now we're restoring it. And so- it's a fixer to fabulous HGTV <laughs> renovation like and, and it's happening yes. in front of my eyes. So. Yes. And just great people stepping up. Like just so many, we have so many amazing people in our church family that are like, yeah. hey, I, I know how to do that. Let me help with this. So feeling really encouraged by uh, people taking ownership over over this new site and uh, already watching prayer happen here and ministry happen even amongst the the construction mm-hmm. chaos. It's It's been really encouraging. So excited for what God's yet to do. Sweet. So yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Sarah, how are you doing? Yeah, it, it, it's been a heavy week, but I'm oh, really yeah. thankful for kind of going back to, I think a couple of podcasts has been a theme of that scheduled rest. And we were talking about vacation. I'm yes. on vacation next week. Yeah. Also, uh, just me, Dave boys, and that hasn't always, we haven't always taken a week off in July mm-hmm. um, after staycation. We just kind of go till day camp. And yeah. uh, I'm just really glad we have that scheduled in. And uh, it's going to be a great time for mm-hmm. our family to just be together and yeah yeah it's so good. good and i was saying to our like you know family ministries team today it's been really this summer has been really exciting because i think we've really used the chance to have the different for us especially in like youth and junior youth kids mm-hmm. church kind of keeps going yep. they never stop but <laughs> uh just having a chance with, with day camp and other things the routine's a bit different in the summer mm-hmm. and to be able to prepare and uh get a lot of things ready uh, for the fall, for yeah. what we want to move forward at New Hope West. It's just really good, exciting time of year. Mm, and, and making those connections with people yep. through all that is yeah. awesome. So good. How about you, Maddie? Yeah, yeah I'm man, I'm doing great. We actually just got back from kind of a prayer week slash vacation time, which was really nice. Just the four of us went away. Kind of what you guys are doing next week. Um, and it was, it was so restorative. We were really intentional. I was really convicted a few weeks ago with one of PT's sermons. He talked about the importance of learning just how to play um, and Mm. be present. And so we took that to heart, Tara and I, with our kids when we were away and just had so much fun. Um, Spent a lot of time swimming and hanging out, board games and all that with the family, but just really enjoyed that time together, which was great because we came back to, uh, you know, full full bore, getting everything done (laughs) type of work, which is Mm. so much fun. So uh, overall doing really well with you, just totally blown away because when I left, none of the trades have been in yet or anything. We were lining everything up and then, one week later, I get back, and well, I mean, the building's been completely revitalized. So mm-hmm. it's pretty nuts. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's good. So, anyway, I want to dive into your sermon, uh, Nate. There's so much, uh, so much in there to unpack and get into. And uh, yeah, I, I say it often when you preach, but there's so many like amazing one-liners that you drop in your sermons. You just have a gift for that mm-hmm. that make you like stop and go, "Oh man, I got to think about this." So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Mm-hmm. And I want to get into that a little bit. Um, you talked about uh, coveting uh, was kind of the topic of, of Sunday. Talk about coveting being well, not coveting. Is yeah, that not coveting. Is that sorry, it's, yeah, true. it's true. So a lot of these have been like we're talking about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. For clarity, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Don't How do not it. to murder. That's right. That's right. But you talked about it being the core of other sins. It's actually kind of the mm-hmm. driving force, at least mm-hmm. for a, a lot of other sins. And I was hoping you could unpack that a little bit. Why is coveting kind of the catalyst that leads us to so many other sins? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think there's a, a, a I, say, I called it the seed of greed, but there's a, mm-hmm. a, a root of pride in behind coveting. And I think if you look at, through scripture, through our own stories, you know, our anecdotal experience, and then if you even look at, um, you know, the fall, Adam yeah. and Eve, like the idea that we we want to know best, we want to be, we do want to play God. And uh, pride kind of is, is the tipping point 
um, of this idea to then we begin to grasp for what we want and how we want it when we want it, which is mm-hmm. to, to covet. And, um, and therefore it leads to all these different things. And it's a posture of our heart that is often very subtle and quick. It's a lie that's often very deceptive because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes even with good intentions, we, we immediately grasp with what we think and, and what we think is best or wish it would be best. Yeah. Um, and then we see the tipping point, like it, with the 10 commandments, it's just so fitting that it's the 10th one. Cause at the end of them all, you're going like it, you covet and then you look, then you steal, you covet <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. and it literally for all other nine of them is like, because you coveted, you're doing this. Yeah. So, mm. um, and we could use this on all kinds of other examples, but it's, it begins in this kind of heart, prideful, greedy, I'll, I know best, I'll take yeah. what I want yeah. and I deserve what I want when I want it. So mm-hmm. well, that's good. That's good. So getting into that a little bit, you had, uh, you made a statement, which I didn't, I didn't realize this, that the Hebrew word for covet and desire is actually the same word, which is really interesting. Um, you know, I want to unpack that a little bit because desire by itself isn't bad. You mentioned that in the sermon, but obviously there's a point where it it does not become good any Mm -hmm. longer. And what are kind of the signs that desire has shifted to coveting, Mm -hmm. um, a little bit? Yeah. Maybe ahead, I can, so. since it's a podcast, maybe yes. I'll nerd out on the Hebrew for just, <laughs> yes, just a second. Please nerd out. Um, so the, the word's only used 26 times in the Old Testament, which mm-hmm. is interesting. And the, the first two uses are really significant. So like in the ESV, it's God, uh, talking about God making the ground. And then he says, Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant. Mm-hmm. So the word translated there, pleasant, is the same as the word to covet to the sight and good for food. So that's clearly a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is when Eve, uh, it, it, the fall as, as pastor Nathan talked about, the tree was to be desired to make one wise. Mm -hmm. And so there it's that use in, 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 is that a negative use or positive use or is it ambiguous? And maybe is that the point? And then there's a number of other usage is, but one that really stuck out to me is in Psalms 19, um, uh, the psalmist is talking about the law of the Lord Mm -hmm. is more to be desired same word that we in other cases right. translate coveted uh, than gold, mm-hmm. and and of course it's used in in Exodus and Deuteronomy and the Ten Commandments and a in a few other places. So there's there's many of these situations where it's used definitely positively, like to desire the law of the Lord. Yep. Definitely negatively, like do not covet, and then some of these other places where it was to be desired for gaining of wisdom, but then Eve as as uh, Pastor Nathan it talked about so well in his sermon you move from the desire to that. Now I'll let him start talking now because he'll be able to quote it, right? The desire moves to the will and the will, and then the body moves towards it. Yeah. I just butchered that. Maybe yeah, no, you that's can a, that's <laughs> save me on that one. Ahead, you know, I, I, I didn't think I touched on this quite enough to uh, on mm-hmm. Sunday. Just, you know, the, the idea that uh, desire is not inherently wrong is maybe also false because mm-hmm. I, I tried to say, like as you love the Lord, He will give you the desires. Yes. And there's a difference between you know kingdom desires, desires yeah. from the Lord of what what breaks His heart, what what He wants to see His kingdom come will be done versus like my kingdom come, my desires. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of desires that are entirely evil. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you, you could desire all kinds of things and go like that's not from God. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. maybe maybe there's a good litmus test in there that we ought to. Uh, have unpacked on Sunday a little bit more mm-hmm. to go like, well, wait, what is a desire of his heart? What does that look like mm-hmm. a little bit more? And I mean, obviously we can use the Bible as a guiding principle for that. Um, but the, the idea that desire shifts is um, I, I like when the scriptures say that Adam admired her and, and thought she was very beautiful. I don't think that is there for a sin. Mm-hmm. God's creation. Yep. That woman is beautiful mm-hmm. to say that is different than moving to lust right. and mm-hmm. desire, mm-hmm. moving to, moving to lust and then moving to possess, which is, yeah, your will yeah. goes over to it and your body moves in to take it, you know, mm-hmm. that you, 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 and you, that is a, in our minds, that is like a, a instant, a, a millisecond yeah, process second, right? yeah. where we quickly go from one thing to the next, yeah. unfortunately. And uh, yet we're told in scripture that it doesn't have to be that way, that with maturity and with the, the Holy Spirit and self-control, we can mm-hmm. admire desire and not move to possess and covet and take something yeah yeah absolutely and and, and i think the you, you know the different ways that word is used through the hebrew scripture is so helpful and interesting in the like there are these good things like the good trees that god made there that are pleasant mm-hmm. which is that same word for covet or or the law of the lord and so like these good things like evil can't doesn't create anything it just twists what god has created right That's so right. You know, I guess to use an example of like you, 
perhaps you're a young unmarried person and your desire to one day be married and have a family and have children, like that's clearly a desire you're supposed mm -hmm. to have that's God planned to be fruitful and multiply. But when does that move into a place of coveting where you're now you're going to start being ungrateful or unsatisfied in the situation you're currently in, or you start coveting and desiring other people who are already married or already have that. But the, the thing you initially want uh, is something that is good and is to be desired, mm -hmm. but isn't to be, as we use the word desire and covet, but isn't to be coveted. And yeah. like, I think, I know that's probably part of what you're getting to is like, when do you know when you shift from one to the other? And yeah. It, yeah. Well, I yeah. love I love that there's like word studies like this because when you read desire now in other parts of scripture, you're yeah. gonna wait, which form of desire are we talking about? That's yeah, right. right. You know, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. gonna try to That's read right. read the context of what yeah. it was written in and why it was written that mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. But it's also helpful to understand that when we read this word it, it in, in in the Hebrew, a lot of it is about self selfish gratification. Yes. Like yes. My, yes. my like I'm lusting. Like I like that we have the word lust in there because then you go, yes. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. I get <laughs> I get right, yeah. I get why I, uh, you know what that word means. Mm -hmm. And now we attribute that word to covet. Mm -hmm. got it and then we understand now that in this context of this desire when it's used in scripture it's meaning that you're you're taking something for your own gain for your own gratification yeah it, there's this inherently selfish like i said prideful kind of i want it and i you know and, and for my gratification mm -hmm. in kind of inherently under the surface with this word when used in scripture mm -hmm. well i think that that's a good way of kind of gauging to where the desire shifts to to coveting is when it's about me and it's about yeah, that's gratifying right. myself. Right. And like that's, like, that's a really easy litmus test. That's right. It's so to beautiful run. to do Faith 5 on the same day. Yeah, yeah. Do, that's that's right. do something that is not at all about us. That's right. That's right. That's right. Focus off of us. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, I, want to talk, I want to talk a little bit, because one of the things you talked about in there was uh, how beautifully Jesus exampled self-control mm -hmm. and how terribly we do at that <laughs> um, as, as, you know, as people. And I guess the, the the base question is how do we get better at self control, right? We talk a lot about self control, but what are the what are just the brass tacks, simple principles of of learning self control mm -hmm. and exercising in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'll share maybe my experience yeah, with, with this every day. I you know when I pray in the morning, my prayer is for more of Him and less of my flesh, more of His Spirit in me, which is gentleness and patience and self control. I I, I list them and I say, please God, like that's what I want today, yeah. and I don't want to act out of my flesh today. Um, but I think, so willpower is this funny thing where we go, oh, you can't just willpower, just pray for it. And I go, actually, God did give us ways mm. to exercise willpower. It's mm -hmm. called fasting. Yeah, that's right. There's spiritual disciplines that God has given us to, to say we can deny our body something. We have, we have power over our body mm -hmm. and our mind more than we think. Yeah. We, I think we suck at it. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> We're true. gluttons in, in every which yeah. way, you know? Yeah. And, uh. And I think there's a there's spiritual practices like that that uh, God has given us that Jesus used that show us that we can actually mm -hmm. empower our bodies to go like oh no you you can say no to that you're not a slave to that that is not your master mm -hmm. and so I think fasting mm -hmm. is certainly one of those spiritual practices that we don't practice enough that is helping us understand that you actually can control yourself mm -hmm. you're not a slave to what you know yep. to that food to that what's on your phone to what whatever's tempting you you're not a slave to it and mm -hmm. it breaks us free yeah. that's good. Maybe I'll go on with one of the key examples yeah. we have of Jesus fasting, yeah. and that's uh, his temptation in the wilderness, especially in Matthew's gospel, mm -hmm. um, where M Matthew is very um, intentionally showing Jesus throughout his gospel as like the true Israelite yeah. who like actually does and fulfills everything that Israel uh, was to be as the yeah. holy nation, the royal priesthood. So he gets baptized and he goes out in the day in the, in the wilderness uh, and he's fasting. And one of the temptations, the last temptation, I think where he's most uh, face to face with the temptation to covet mm -hmm. is when uh, the evil one says to him, bow down to me and I'll give you all yeah, the kingdoms of the world. Right. And, and his desire for all the kingdoms of the world is for, for him, not for us, but for him, a right desire, mm -hmm. right? But he's so able to focus on the perspective of who he is, his relationship with the father, that he knows like, we're, that's going to happen. The desire that I really want and have, that is a good desire. I can trust the father that that will come to happen. And I will be king of the world again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but I trust God that actually the way to that is by laying down my life 
and going through suffering. And I'm going to trust him to that, not to take it now. Cause he could have taken it now. Mm-hmm. And, and at least that's what, that's yeah, what that seems and tempting right? it yeah. with. Right. So yeah. having that eternal perspective that we can trust that if you have a desire that is actually good and godly yeah, one day yeah. in the new heaven and the new earth, whatever the real desire is that you have mm-hmm. will be fulfilled. Even going back to the earlier example, maybe you will never be married. Mm-hmm. Maybe you will be single for your whole life. And that's what God has called you to. That's what your situations demand, but your desire for companionship, for intimacy, for having people around you in a community, those can be met in the kingdom of God here now as part of the church, mm. but not maybe fully yeah. because it's the already and not yet kingdom. But one day, all your desires for intimacy, for connection, for everything you really want will be met in eternal life. Mm. They can start to be met now and eventually. So I think that is really a practical tool of how you delay gratification where you keep that eternal perspective of if I have a godly desire, one day that desire will come to pass in a truer, better sense than maybe I even want it now. Well, and what Jesus did is repeat the truth. So, yeah, that's like, right. Yeah, the a scripture. Lot of, a lot of issues with exactly. self-controllers because we believe a lie yep. that if I do this, I'll be gratified. Or if I yep. do, he yeah. stood on the truth. So we need to know our scripture. We need to yep. stand yep. on truth. So yep. I think I think exactly. another really important piece in that too is is getting our heads around the idea that we actually don't know what we really desire. <laughs> that's right. right? That's like right. We have this perverse right. understanding right. of good, desire. Man. Yeah. Uh, which you had, you had mentioned in your sermon, this idea, like you've got to seek the Lord first so that he can give you the actual desires mm-hmm. of your heart. Yeah. Because we actually need the Lord to filter what's good in the thing that's we right. think we want. That's right. Um, and so I, I think that's a really important piece as we're navigating all this and going like, you know, like understand that in our, our brokenness as humans, we actually can't really perceive what we we really desire, what we actually need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we need the Lord to, to do that for mm-hmm. us. And that's why, like you said, seeking him first is so important. That's mm-hmm. the filter. That's the thing. Because God can actually give you what you're really longing That's for. That's right. And, and I think Nate gave a really great practical example from the stage on Sunday morning where it's like, yeah, all of a sudden you're desiring to be the construction worker outside. Yeah. And so you force yourself to actually fantasize about the actual reality. If mm-hmm. I was actually doing that every day, this thing, if I actually got the thing I think I wanted, what would actually happen? Yeah. And especially when we know it's something we can't pursue, yep. fantasizing accurately about how might that <laughs> destroy right. us yep. Yep. can help us with yeah, our self-control. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Let's, let's get into the kind of another part of your sermon Nate, that you talked about. Um, cause you talked to like the key and solution to all of this thing uh, of wrestling mm-hmm. with coveting is contentment. Like that's, that's where we kind of land is learning contentment. And so you mentioned that having a biblical concept of what we deserve is a good way of helping keep things in check. Um, because a lot of this coveting thing is thinking we deserve something mm-hmm. that we don't currently have. Can you just unpack that idea first of what is a biblical concept of what we actually deserve look like? And how does that actually help change our perspective? Yeah, I thought a lot of times when we talk about contentment, people think right away of material possessions. Right. I should just be content with my house I have and things I have. Yeah. And I go, oh no, it's it's much bigger than that. Yeah. Like, like the spiritual realm of what we deserve, mm-hmm. understanding that we deserve hell. Yeah. And as you read scripture, you read about the ro- broken brokenness of the Israelites, and you're like, they're so dumb. And then you're mm-hmm. like, that's all me. I do the exact same <laughs> yeah, thing. Right, yeah. Um, and, uh, and then you recognize the, gra- the more we understand the magnitude of the gospel, which for the rest of our lives continue to be in awe of, that we're going to continue mm-hmm. to unpack day in and day out and realize how the gospel is infused there and affects this and how big and un- un- you know, unbelievable that is. The more we kind of rest in that yeah. awe of it, kind of even maybe the wonder and confusion of it, um, the more I think we will actually have a spirit, like a, a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness and contentment. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that'll infuse material possessions that will then infuse relationships, yeah. the way we see and value one another. Um, it ch- kind of changes the perspective of everything that's material created <laughs> once we understand the creator. And I think we've got to do it that way instead of try to understand the creator through through the created, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. spend time in the gospel and understanding yeah. the magnitude of how much we've been forgiven first. That's yeah, true. I think that's that's so key. And I something I've been thinking about a lot as we've been preparing for day camp, it's going to be a big theme of day camp this year is I think we think we deserve a lot of things <laughs> yeah. because we think we deserve it more than him or deserve it more than her instead of, you know, as, as you talked about, Nate, comparing ourselves to what we actually deserve which yeah. is hell. Like God doesn't yeah. owe us anything. Yeah. But we think, yeah, but I should, that person, how come they, because, mm-hmm. and we compare ourselves to other people. Um, and instead of 
having that bigger eternal perspective of how much grace we've actually received and how everything's a gift. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I, I think my maybe favorite Jesus parable on this is he tells the story of um, a, a man hires people to come work in his vineyard. And oh, yeah. they're like, you know, well, you work all day for a hundred bucks. Okay. At the end of the day, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. They're happy. It's a great rate of pay. Great. They go to work. Then some people come at noon and he say, come, I'll, I'll hire you for the rest of the day, pay you what's ever fair. Some people come at 4 PM and he says, come work till, you know, work till five and I'll pay you whatever's fair. And then the people who he said, I'll give you a hundred bucks for the day are like stoked because the 4 p.m. people get 100 bucks, and they're like, well, if they get 100 bucks, then, well, oh, man, what <laughs> yeah. are we going to get? And he gives them all the same. Mm -hmm. And the the people who worked all day are, like, totally frustrated. Yeah. He's like, but I didn't, I didn't shortchange you. This is exactly what we talked about, and mm -hmm. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and grace upon whom I have grace. Yeah. And so comparing ourselves and our relationship to other people versus just our relationship directly with the Lord, I think, is a huge it's a huge piece of that. Yeah. Something I feel like I'm just starting to really <laughs> try to think about in my own life. Yeah. I think there's a comparison game that we like to play. Yes. Um, and that is how we judge what is fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. We, we love to play judge, mm -hmm. which is again, back to the, the fall of the issue of oh with, Lord, with yeah. all this is pride. We like, like to play ju judge. And so when, you know, when it says that you, you, uh, children of your father in heaven, he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. And you're like, yeah. well, okay, the sun's got to rise. He sends the rain on the righteous. It's like, and he sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And you're like, oh, shouldn't the unrighteous get the rain? They're the bad guys. The rain's good. This mm -hmm. verse is talking about people who need crops. Yeah. yeah. And so he's he's talking about blessing both mm -hmm. the just and the unjust. And we hate that. That concept just goes right against our idea of fairness. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always thank God I'm not God because I would be a terrible God. Mm -hmm. You know, like this level of grace and mercy. And again, as you sit and wrestle with it, wrestle with it, allow yourself to wrestle and go like, why are they getting blessed? Why is it? Allow that to be a wrestle and then realize the character of God in the midst of that because that's how he loves you. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, the, we we like to be the judge weighing yeah. the scales. And uh, unfortunately, the scales are always weighed in our favor. Mm -hmm. That's true. Absolutely. Again, it's that perspective piece, right? The last, uh, last thing I want to ask you about, actually, um, and this is a very kind of more situational thing. You had, you had mentioned living with an attitude of gratitude as kind of a main means of remaining content, right? Always looking at what God is, how God is blessing, what he's doing. Um, so practically, how do you maintain that attitude when you go through difficult situations, which we all have? Um, you know, how do you actually continue to anchor yourself in that truth and, and live in that, that space of, of gratitude? What's that look like? Yeah, I, I'll give one real practical example, but I think it infuses kind of the spiritual discipline of prayer mm -hmm. primarily. Yeah. But I went yeah. for a run the one day and I was having just a horrible day and I went, God, you love me and you forgive me. My wife is awesome. My kids are awesome. The <laughs> church is amazing. My friends and family are awesome. God, you love me and forgive me. <laughs> and I literally just repeated it for like eight and a half kilometers because I needed to actually infuse the truth of mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the amazing things going on in my life and not let something else come and steal and rob me yeah. of joy. Yeah. And um, I think that's, you know, we often quote on the podcast, the Job perspective shift he receives. He doesn't receive mm -hmm. an answer to all, why everything's falling apart yeah, around him. Right. He receives a perspective of how good mm -hmm. Yahweh is yeah. and how divine he is. And he goes, wow, yeah. for a divine God like that, I'm good. I'll just submit <laughs> and surrender, you yeah, know, that's right, like yeah. that's enough to fill mm -hmm. him with, with joy and fill him with, with shalom, wholeness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think just in those hard, difficult times, seasons of waiting are often those things, waiting for yeah. the diagnosis, waiting yeah. for whatever, where we, we just let it rob us of the joy of today. And so we constantly need to perspective shift. And I think the best way I've ever done that is in times of prayer, mm -hmm. when I just spend time thanking God for the things I can thank him for. Yeah. Some things I don't, I'm not happy about. Yeah, that's I'll right. get to those later. I'm just yeah. going to spend time thanking mm -hmm. him because there is definitely stuff to thank him for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we need words to help us with that. And probably one of the best ones I know is the old hymn, which Lindy now does a beautiful version of that. I'm sure it's on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, but the the lyrics go, whatever my lot, you've mm -hmm. taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. And that's a declaration that whatever is going on, I you've given me eternal life. Yeah. Like it's well with my soul. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? And when we... Remember that we've been given that salvation. I think that's a lot of what, when we get into the armor of God and we mm -hmm. pray and we put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation yeah. is having that mind perspective that 
you have received salvation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mm. and having the hope of that eternal perspective mm. that it is well with your soul, and one day all the desires of your heart yeah. will be met in a truer and better way than right now you could even ask or imagine. Mm. That's good. That was very good. Uh, the last piece I want to circle back to what you had said a moment, a moment, a moment ago about how, you know, there are things you're not happy with that does not negate the fact that you can still be thankful. That's right. We tend to want to live in one emotional stream at once <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but we can have joy and sorrow at the same time. That's right. um, and I think it's important to acknowledge that the situation does not determine whether or not you can be thankful. Your posture of your heart. Right? The posture how many, heart, so. how many people who have everything that we hear testimony after testimony. Oh, I had yeah. everything. I think it was yeah. Chantel's last mm -hmm. testimony. I had everything I wanted mm -hmm. and I felt hopeless. Yeah. I yeah. fell to my knees and cried out to God. Like it, like we think something, we will add something like the rich young man that approached Jesus. Yeah. Saying, what oh, can yeah. I add? I can add something, some righteousness or add a new gift or add something, give something to someone yeah. and then I'll feel good. Right. Yeah. Then I'll feel sure. And it's like, no, that's not where it comes from. Yeah, so we're, we're going to the wrong well, as I said on Sunday. Mm -hmm. so. oh, that's good. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in the podcast. Coming all the way out to uh, yeah. New Hope West to do that. <laughs> it was a really lovely drive. It. It was Only fun. a short few moments. <laughs> that's right. It's good. But uh, no, thank you so much for just sharing from your heart. And I uh, really appreciate it. To our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you're new to New Hope or checking the podcast or trying to figure out what we're all about, I encourage you to jump on our website or app and fill out a connect card. Because uh, we really do want to connect with you there. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.